This is AutoLine Daily, a show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. General Motors and Hyundai reported their first quarter earnings this morning, and let's hit the highlights, starting with GM. While it sold more vehicles in North America than last year, sales were down in South America and China, which dragged its overall sales down 3%. That total came to 1.38 million vehicles in the last three months of the year. Thanks to selling more vehicles in North America at higher prices, its revenue hit almost $40 billion, which was up 11%. Its operating profit hit $2.5 billion, up 17%. But its net profit of $2.3 billion was 16% lower than last year. That's because GM got far less income from its Chinese joint venture partners, where sales fell 24% and GM had to pay $400 million more in taxes versus a year ago. Even so, GM's earnings beat Wall Street's expectations, and it told analysts it's going to raise its profit forecast for the year. Meanwhile, the Hyundai Group posted massive financial gains over the last year. It sold just over a million vehicles worldwide in the last three months, up 12.5%. Its revenue hit $28 billion, almost up 25%. And now the numbers are red hot. Hyundai's operating profit shot up 86% to more than $2.6 billion, while its net profit skyrocketed 92%, hitting $2.5 billion. Even if you compare Hyundai's earnings to the fourth quarter of last year, they're up significantly. GM and Hyundai also announced plans to make more batteries in the U.S. GM is joining forces with Samsung SDI to build prismatic and cylindrical nickel-rich batteries. The plant will make 30 gigawatt hours of batteries at full production, bringing GM's total U.S. battery capacity to 160 gigawatt hours. Neither company said where the plant will be built, but remember, GM and LG had a falling out over a battery plant that was supposed to go into Indiana, so maybe the plant with Samsung will go there. And we already knew that Hyundai was building a battery plant in Georgia, but it looks like it's going to be bigger than first announced. Earlier reports said the plant would make 20 gigawatt hours. Now Hyundai says it will produce 35 gigawatt hours of batteries, which it says will support about 300,000 electric vehicles. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Ford CEO Jim Farley recently said the Chinese market is saturated with two-row crossovers. And really, we think the same could be said of Europe and the U.S., especially with new EVs. And that's why we're excited to see a report from Mopar Insiders that cites dealer sources who say they were shown an all-new, all-electric sedan from Chrysler. It's said to be a sleek, fastback sedan, similar to an outline shown during its EV day in 2021, and about the same size as the Dodge Charger Daytona concept. That would indicate that it's based on the Stella Large platform. And the obvious thing to speculate here is that this could be the EV replacement of the Chrysler 300. Mopar Insiders also claims Chrysler is expected to add the airflow to its lineup late next year. And some people are worried that EVs will be like our phones or laptops, where the battery works fine at first, but over the course of three to five years, it struggles to hold a charge. And then they'll be stuck replacing an expensive battery pack but EV batteries are designed to last 10 to 20 years while maintaining up to 70% of their original capacity. And new data released by Tesla shows that the Model S and X do really well at retaining battery life. It reports that after 200,000 miles of driving, 
the batteries in those models are only degrading about 12%. And Electric reports that model type and battery size plays a role in the amount of degradation, and also that early data on the Model 3 and Y shows a loss of less than 15% over 200,000 miles. But obviously, there's a lot less of those vehicles that have reached that mileage yet since they came out later. Do you remember a recent report we had about BMW bringing live football or soccer onto the giant rear cinema screen of the 7 Series for customers in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland? Well, now it's expanding that pilot test into more European countries, the Americas, as well as Asia. The test lasts until March of next year, and while BMW will likely have a deal to live stream American football in the U.S., I wouldn't mind watching some of the playoff hockey that's going on right now in the backseat of a 7 Series. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. A new paper published by SAE International says electric vehicles are more likely to fall short of EPA estimates in real world testing than ICE vehicles. The study used data from car and driver's real-world tests going back to 2016. In its 75 mile per hour test, more than 350 ICE vehicles averaged 4% better fuel economy than their EPA figures, while EVs got 12.5% less range than what's on their labels. One reason for the difference is how range is calculated the EPA only provides a combined rating, which is weighted more in favor of city driving where EVs perform better, which boosts their estimates. The SAE suggests providing a city and highway rating like the EPA does with ICE vehicles. Car and driver's rear world tests are done at a constant 75 miles an hour, but in the EPA testing, the speed varies which allows EVs to use regenerative braking, and that also helps improve their range. And the EPA test is done at lower speeds, and there's two different formulas it uses to simulate the effects of higher speeds. And automakers get to choose which formula they prefer, which means range figures aren't perfectly comparable. So the SAE suggests the tests should be standardized so all vehicles are tested equally to get more accurate results. Boston, Massachusetts is converting its entire fleet of 750 public school buses to electric by 2030. And the city just received its first 20 buses from the Bluebird Corporation. The buses, which can carry up to 71 students, have a range of 120 miles and can fully recharge in four hours using a level 3 30 kilowatt fast charger. Bluebird says energy costs for its electric buses are 14 cents per mile compared to 49 cents per mile for diesel. And we wonder if the city of Boston will take advantage of bi-directional charging where they can sell electricity in the vehicle's batteries back to the utilities. We learned at CES that two school districts in Massachusetts and Vermont did this and they earned $10,000 per bus as part of pilot projects. The German supplier Siemens just opened a new plant in Texas to make EV chargers. Their level 2 AC chargers, which range from 11.5 to 19.5 kilowatts. And that means they'll probably mostly be used at homes and small businesses, but could really be used almost anywhere. It's Siemens second charger plant in the US and it plans to build a million chargers for the market. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. 
and by Scheffler. We pioneer motion.